Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me um, with this session on how to search statutes on Westlaw. Today's class is going to focus on statutes and just the different ways that you can look for your statutes, as well as how you can expand your research using a statute. So the first thing is, is I've logged into Westlaw Precision, and the first way that you can find your statute is naturally if you have the citation. So if I am looking for Florida Statute 767.04, the statute dealing with dog bite liability, I can just simply type in that statute into the toolbar, and there is our statute on dog owner's liability for damages to persons bitten and I could begin my research here. But let's say I am simply looking for the statute and I don't have the citation. So I'm gonna go back out to Westlaw Precision. And the first place I'm gonna click into is content types. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into statutes. I'm a big believer in if you know where your answer is, go to that database. I could have run a search from the homepage using the big toolbar, the global toolbar on the homepage. But if I know I'm looking for a Florida statute, I wanna go ahead and narrow my universe of potential results. I don't need to search in 40,000 places if I know I'm looking in one place. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into Florida statutes. Now, there are a couple of ways right here on the screen that you can look for your statute. The first, of course, is just by simply typing in a search. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But you can also look through the titles. Now, I love that the statutes open up in title format first um, so that you can quickly scan through all of the titles, chapters, subchapters, and look through all of the entirety of the statutes as if you were looking at it in print. So as I'm scrolling through the titles, I can see that title uh, 15 is uh, the title on torts. And so I can open up this title and just kind of go through, excuse me, title 55. Sorry, my Roman numerals are, are off. And so I can look through all of the titles here and see that chapter 767 under this title is damages by dogs, dangerous dogs. And if I start opening up parts and part one, part two, I can see any other subsections here. And here is my dog owner's liability for damages to persons bitten. What I like about this is a lot of times statutes tend not to play well with terms and connector searches. Um, a lot of times they don't use common legal terminology. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So being able to see everything on the screen will definitely help you find what you're looking for. It also helps you in the sense of, do you need anything surrounding it? Um, do you need section 76701 or 76705? Um, maybe it was a dog on a farm, perhaps. Um, I can also see in part two, dangerous dogs. Um, you know, what kind of dog was this? Was it a chihuahua or was it a pit bull? Or, you know, a lot of things can really open up your research here and kind of teach you along the way what you might need to know, especially when you don't know what you're looking for exactly. And I think that's sometimes um, one of the challenges with legal research is you're not sure exactly what you need yet. You're just kind of out there looking for things. And this, to me, will also really help you find what you're looking for and ensure that you're not missing anything. All right. So that's another way to look for your statutes is by simply just starting to open up the titles in the sections that you're looking for. The next way is by using the index over on the far right of the screen where it says index Florida statutes. We have the index for the US code and all 50 state statutes, as well as for the code of federal regulations and your administrative codes for all 50 states. So this is a really helpful tool. Again, as I've mentioned, sometimes um, your statutory databases 
don't always use the language that you're looking for. And sometimes you can be looking for something because you're stuck on a word or a phrase. And that's just not how it's written in that particular statutory code. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. And so I want to show you a couple of examples. So the first is I want to click on the letter S just to kind of look for, let's say maybe I was looking for something with senior citizens and I kept typing in senior citizens and what I was looking for just did not come up. And so as I'm looking through the Florida index, I can see that it's not usually listed as senior citizens. It's called aged persons. And so that is probably something most of us would not type is aged persons. Um, I don't like to think of people as being aged. It sounds a little bit like cheese or wine, but the index helped me find potentially the sections that I was looking for because I looked in the index for senior citizens and the index was teaching me that they're usually called aged persons in your statutory databases. So I wanted to highlight that. But if I was looking for um, my section um, dealing with dog bites, liabilities, injuries to persons, I could start with the letter A for animals, maybe C, canines, D for dogs. So I could look at any of those. So as I scroll through A first, I can scroll down. It's all in alphabetical order. And here we have animals. I can click on that section in the index. And it's now going to open up everything under animals. Here we have cats. So maybe this is promising. I can keep going. And then there's a section on dogs. And it will now open up everything dealing with dogs in the Florida statutes. And then there is a subsection on bites. And here we have persons lawfully on premises, owner liable. And there is my 76704, back to where we started with the citation format option. So I just wanted to highlight those different ways, find by citation, using the table of contents, and then using the index. So all three of those ways are really helpful, as well as just generally using a term search in your statutory database. So I did want to highlight also, that statutes tend to be um, very tricky to search in, and it's usually best to use a natural language search and not necessarily a terms and connectors search, um, mostly because you can see here that the text of the statute is about a paragraph. Um, so using something like sentence and paragraph connectors might not always be the best because they're usually only about a paragraph, or sometimes um, things like uh, in the United States Code Annotated, they don't really even use the general rules of grammar. They have letters and numbers and Roman numerals and one sentence and semicolons. And sometimes using those connectors don't work very well in the U.S. Code. So always keeping your searches simple is also a good path to take in your statutes searching. So always keep that in mind. So what can I do here from my statute to help me expand my research? There are a few things at the top of the screen that I wanted to highlight at the top of your document. The first are the notes of decisions, also called the annotations. The notes of decisions are just cases that the Westlaw editors have identified and have told me, Anna, if you are researching this statute in the Florida Statutes Annotated, this section, these are some really good cases that will help you find what you're looking for. And if I scroll down over on the left side, I can see how these cases have discussed this section in the U.S. Um, into the Florida statutes. And so I can look here and see if any of these subsections will really help me. So in my first class um, on secondary sources, remember I was talking about a child, you know, walking on the sidewalk and maybe playing with a fence. And so as I scroll through the notes of decisions, I can see that there is a section on infants. And so here we have 
a couple of cases that might be helpful in me getting started with my research. Here we have circumstantial evidence that a four-year-old child had provoked or aggravated the dog, you know, so that the owners of the dog were not liable for injury to child bitten by the dog. And here is a case. A child of tender years can mischievously provoke a dog and thus afford a complete defense to the owner under this section. And so here are a couple of cases that discuss that issue. Um, so again, just you can look through the notes of decisions to see if there's anything helpful. You can also see that it's linking me to some West Topic and Key Numbers. We'll talk about the West Topic and Key Number System in my case law section. So be sure to read uh, to review that video when um, you are looking at this after this section. We'll have that loaded soon. So I just wanted to highlight the notes of decisions. This to me is one of the best places if you are looking for cases because the West editors have done a lot of the research for you and are already pointing you in the right direction that you need to go and have done a lot of the legwork. So always click on the notes of decisions first. You can also look at the context and analysis tab. These might be some uh, articles from law reviews and journals, some ALRs, encyclopedia articles from Amjur, Corpus Juris Secundum, some various forms if you're in practice, um, need to file a complaint against someone, some bar reference materials, treatise materials to all get you started. Like I love this, elements of a prima facie case of dog bite liability from the Florida practice. That might be a great article for me to get started. I don't know what I need to prove yet. Maybe I'm the dog owner. The defenses to a dog bite liability against the dog's owner. Maybe I own the dog and I need to take a look at this article. Jury instructions, jury verdicts, um, things from the restatements. Again, topic and key numbers to help lead me to more cases. So this is a great place to begin and a great place to also generate ideas of terminology that you might want to um, add to your searches, to the text that you're writing in your memos. Here we have homeowner, pedestrian, fault, fault-based uh, allegations, keeper, harborer. Again, this is a great way to start learning the language of what you're writing. And this is why I think it's really helpful for you to take a look at different paths and avenues to find what you're looking for and not just do a search you know, from the homepage every single time and learn to click on things that you've never clicked on. Context and analysis is a great tool to help you learn a lot of different types of databases that are out there for you, different types of text and treatises, publications that might be available to you. So I did wanna highlight this tab as another place to get started. And then the final tab is on key site citing references. And this is everything that has cited to this section in the Florida statutes annotated. So this will be cases, court documents, administrative materials, secondary materials, arbitration, practice materials if available. So this is also a good tab to get started. So if I know I wanted cases, every case out there that has cited to the section, here we go. I can now look through all of these cases that have cited to 76704. Maybe I want to do a search within these cases and see if any of them mention the word fence. You know, if any of the 81 in this list reference the word fence, um, child, infant, provocation, um, you know, anything else about the facts or the hypothetical that I'm researching and trying to understand and try to analyze and make my argument. So I went from 81 down to 14 of these cases, also reference the word fence. So this is really how you can kind of start with your statute, use key site citing references, and then add a term that you're looking for, something specific. Again, I could take out fence and write child, infant, toddler, kid, anything else that I was looking for to try to cross-reference and help get me the exact cases that I was wanting to find. 
I can also use key site citing references to find additional secondary sources. Remember, I went to context and analysis. These are some of the documents that were identified by the West editors as being super helpful, but now I can click on secondary sources that will find everything in all secondary sources that have cited to this section. So again, here we have uh, our encyclopedias, things like Amger, practice databases, Florida pleading and practice forms, um, Florida jurisprudence database. So lots of really good information here and an easy way to expand your research when you know that you have a statute to start your research. So if you know that there's a statute out there, to me, one of the best ways to start your research is by finding that statute, because you can see that there are so many different ways to then expand your research exponentially with just a few clicks, notes of decisions, context and analysis, and key site citing references right off the bat. So that's the kind of the gist of researching with statutes that I wanted to highlight today. Remember, if you have any questions, to please email me at any time at anna.gara at tr.com. Um, don't hesitate. I'm happy to help answer if there's something that you're looking for or if you have a statute and you have a question. Um, again, asking one question can save you hours and hours of time in the future. So don't ever hesitate to email me. I have a general response time of 24 hours. Sometimes if you get my out of office, um, it might be a little bit longer than that, but generally it is within a day. So if you can wait a little bit, always email me. But if you are having specific questions that you need answered immediately, you can always scroll to the very bottom of the screen and use the live chat option or call a reference attorney at 1-800-733-2889 um, to get research assistance right away. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate your help uh, being, your, being here today. And um, don't hesitate to reach out for help if you need it. Thanks so much.